All right, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll go ahead and build out the menu page. So let's go ahead into the pages folder. We'll go ahead and create a new folder called menu. And I'm going to create a new file called index.csx. So again, if you aren't familiar with Next.js's routing mechanism, go ahead and check out my video on Next.js routing. It'll explain a lot of stuff. Okay, but basically, if we just create a folder here, call, call it whatever we want, call it menu, and then create an index.tsx file. And then what we could do is we could just create a component. I'll just call this menu page. I'll type annotate this as next page. And we'll just return some JSX. And then what we could do is we can export this menu page component as a default export. And next.js will pick this up. And it will take the name of the folder and map this uh, map that route to to render out this this uh, JSX component. Okay, as HTML, of course. So I should be able to just go to the menu page. So if I refresh, you can see that I have a menu page. Uh, let me actually do one thing. Let me just change the color over here to background color. There we go. Perfect. All right, so the next thing is, uh, what exactly is this menu page supposed to do? Well, this menu page is actually supposed to uh, show all of the guilds that the user can configure. Okay, so it's kind of like the entry point to the dashboard. They have to select the guild, and when they select it, it's going to navigate them to the correct, uh, the, the, it's going to navigate them to the actual dashboard so that they can actually, you know, configure uh, their guild settings, okay? So the question is, how exactly do we render all the guilds? Well, we have to fetch the guilds. And if you remember, we actually built out the endpoint in the ExpressJ section of this tutorial series. We built out the endpoint uh, for getting all of the mutual guilds. Okay, so that endpoint is what we're going to call to fetch all of the mutual guilds. Okay, and those mutual guilds will be rendered on this, uh, on this menu page. So to fetch the guilds, we're actually going to be using the get server side props function. So let's go ahead and do that. So with Next.js, all we do is we just export an asynchronous function that's called get server side props. And let me just zoom in a little bit more. Okay. So we export this function and what next will do is it will call this function uh, upon request. Okay. So Every single request, it will call this function. So this function takes in one argument, and it's the type is get server side props context. Okay, and you can actually reference a lot of stuff with this context. You can reference the request. Uh, you can reference the query parameters. A lot of different things. Okay, but the only thing I will do here is we're just really going to fetch the. Uh, we're really just going to fetch the uh, the API for all of the mutual guilds, okay? So to do that, it's actually gonna be a little bit tricky because if you remember correctly, uh, we actually have, uh, we actually protected that API route. So I'll walk you through it step by step, so don't worry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the utils folder. I'll create a file called api.ts, okay? And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function called fetch mutual guilds. And this will be an asynchronous function. And it's just going to take in the context object. Okay. Now what's next is we're going to go ahead and use Axios. So I'm gonna go ahead and install Axios. So let's do yarn add Axios. And then we'll install the types as well. Now, one thing that I do wanna mention is that Axios, um, you might have some issues with Axios depending on where in the application you use it. For example, if you use Axios uh, in like middleware, you might get like some kind of adapter issue. I know I did. Um, you can use Axios inside get server side uh, get server side props and I think you should be able to just use it uh, when you're performing like client side JavaScript like client side rendering so uh, you should be able to do that just fine um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use Axios 
to fetch our data. So let's go ahead and import Axios from Axios. And then what's next is we're actually going to need to do one additional thing. Now, if you recall in my previous dashboard tutorials, if you've, if you've seen them, that is, um, what we actually are able to do is we're actually able to make an API call to the server and pass in the cookies using the uh, using a request config and we can pass in a property called with credentials and set that to true now with next.js we actually can't just pass in with credentials the reason why is because it doesn't know where to actually get the credentials from right because it runs on the server side and it doesn't actually have uh, it doesn't actually have the cookies saved anywhere if it was like on the browser then we'd be able to pass in with credentials but remember um, we're on the server side right now. So we're actually going to need to grab the cookies manually. Okay, and then we're going to need to actually uh, pass that in as a header. And don't worry, I'll show you how we can do it. It's actually pretty, pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file called helpers.ts. And this is just going to be a file where we'll have a bunch of helper helper functions. And one of the functions that I'll create is called validate cookies. And this will just take in the context. I'm just going to shorthand, shorthand it and label it CTX for the parameter. But the type is going to be the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and declare a variable called session ID. And the value of this will just be the context dot req. So that's request. And this request object has a property called cookies okay and we can just reference the cookie name so by default the session id that express will generate and send back to the client is called uh, connect sid but we'll change this later on but that's just the default cookie name okay unless if you've went into your api and manually changed it yourself you're going to you're just going to pass in that value, but by default, it's connects it. So you're going to actually have to check the browser. So let me actually show you very quickly. So right over here, you see at the cookies, you can see that I have this connect.sid, and that's the name of the cookie. Okay, we're going to change it later, so don't worry. Um, Yeah, that's just pretty much it with that cookie. So we're going to grab that cookie. Okay, once we grab that cookie, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to check to see if that cookie is truthy or not, because that cookie might not be available like it, it might not be stored in the client so we'll just check to see if it is there now if it's if the cookie is there uh what we'll do is we'll return an object and this is going to be a custom uh object that has the cookie property and and for now i'm just going to hard code the connect sid like this and this is actually what the browser does it takes all of your cookies and it takes it takes them as key value pairs. Uh, so, for example, the key is connect.sid, and it is equal to the actual value. And then it separates them, I think, with semicolons. And so after that, if I want to pass another cookie, I can do semicolon, and then I could pass in another key value pair where the key and an equal sign value, I could do that. That's what the browser or what the client does by default um, when you specify this cookie header. So we're just manually doing it. Okay, and it's really convenient that we have the request object to actually grab the cookies. Okay, so we're going to have to return this object. Uh, now, if the session ID is not is not available, like, for example, if it's undefined or if it's just not there, we'll just return uh, false. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll exit this helpers function. And... We'll go back into this fetch mutual guilds function. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first, let me go ahead and do this. Uh, we'll go ahead and call validate cookies and we'll pass in the context. Okay, so we're just taking this context that we're going to be passing in from get server side props, the function in our component. We're going to pass it in into validate cookies. Okay. So if headers, uh, so if validate cookies returns the actual, uh, returns a truthy value, which is just going to be an object, uh, then we're going to go ahead and continue with our logic. If it doesn't, if it returns an, it returns a falsy value, which just means that the cookie is not available, 
um, then that means that uh, the user is not authenticated or the cookie expired or the cookie is not, just not present. So let's go over here. Let's just do if not headers. We'll go ahead and redirect the user back to the home page. So we'll do return redirect like this. And you can you can do that actually inside uh, get server side props. Okay, but we'll do that inside inside uh, inside API.ts just to make things simple. Okay. So uh, cool, that's going to handle the first case if the cookie is not present. So now what's next is we're going to actually have to fetch the API. So we'll use a try catch. So we'll go ahead and use Axios and do this. So const data equals await axios dot get. And then we're going to need to pass in the API URL. So the API URL uh, is just going to be uh, localhost port 3001 slash API. Okay. So I'm just going to paste that there because I already have that already. And I'm going to use a template string to interpolate the API URL. And then to get the actual guilds, it's just going to be slash guilds. Okay, so we're really just calling uh, localhost port 3001 slash API slash guilds. Okay, and normally we'd pass in with credentials, but because uh, we're on the server side, we're just going to pass in the headers like this. Okay, and remember, access.get will return an access, access response. And we can just get the data by destructuring it from there. Uh, we'll also create a custom type too to actually uh, to actually destructure. We'll also create a custom type for our uh, access response because right now it doesn't know what data type it is. So I'll go inside new file. I'll just create an index.ts file. You know what? Let me actually just delete this types folder because I don't like. For types, I don't really think I'll need a folder for that. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and copy the partial guild that we had from the API. So this is the partial guild object. Okay, it's just the same exact one that we use for the API. Same exact thing. And then we'll just type annotate that right over here as a guild array. So now TypeScript knows that data should be a guild array. Okay. So... What we'll do is if there's no errors, we'll just return props. And then uh, I'm going to label this as guilds. Okay. And if there is an error, we'll console log the error and then we'll just redirect the user. We'll just redirect the user. Okay. So what happens here is basically we're just calling fetch mutual guilds and Inside fetch mutual guilds, we're just returning whatever it is. Uh, whatever we're just basically returning the redirect or the props, right? And essentially, what we're going to do inside get server side props is we're just going to return the return value of fetch mutual guilds. So we could actually just do everything inside get server side props, but that becomes it's going to make our code look very very ugly inside the page. So it's better if we just encapsulate everything inside fetch mutual guilds. And just return whatever that's returning. So return fetch mutual guilds and pass in the context object. Okay. And now we should probably get like a, we should be able to just redirect back to the home page. So I'm on the menu page right now. So let me go ahead into the, the client real quick. Let me actually just log some stuff real quick because we're not logging anything right now. So it might be a little bit confusing with what's going on. So let's go ahead and write some logs. Or wait, sorry, it's not data, it's guilds. Okay. So if I refresh, let's look at the console. Uh, let's open up the actual console over here. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Um, huh, interesting. It's not... It's not doing anything right now. Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, okay, perfect. Yeah, so right now you can see over here that it logged all of the guilds. So it actually fetched it successfully. Now you're probably confused why uh, we're actually able to, like how are we able to actually like get this to work? Because um, right now, like we didn't actually perform any authentication, right? If you recall, 
at the API, well, it actually is protected. So if we're not logged in, it's not going to actually allow us to fetch the data. Uh, this has something to do with the cookie. So if you see over here, um, for some reason, I don't, I'm not sure if this is how it's supposed to work, but port 3001 and port 3000, it shares the same cookie. So if I actually clear right now, if I refresh, you're going to actually see that um, it actually throws an error. All right, so I went ahead and I figured out what the issue was. So right now, if I were to go to slash menu, it's going to throw this error. And so I did a little bit of digging in the docs to figure out what the problem was. So it seems like we actually need to pass uh, in an object for redirect. Uh, so we have to pass in an object and a destination. And then we'll do the same thing right over here as well. So that error should go away now. Okay, so if I try to go to the menu page, you'll notice that's not going to allow me to. Okay, now, right now I'm currently unauthorized. So let me actually see if I can log in with Discord. And so I'm currently authorized right now, so I should be able to refresh. And you can see that I have all the servers. Okay, now if I were to go back to the menu page, it would actually let me... Uh, it would actually let me go to the menu page because the cookies are actually being shared uh, on this localhost domain. So you can see that over here, I'm on even though I'm on port 3000, uh, I'm still getting the cookie back from port 3001. Okay, so we're currently logged in. Obviously, what we're going to have to do for the back end is we're going to have to make the back end redirect to the front end, which we'll do. It's, 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 it's really easy. All you just do is call res.redirect and then you'll send it back to the front end which is just localhost port 3000. But you can see now that we can actually access the menu page. Okay. And we have our data as well. We should have our data. So if I refresh the page and if I look at the logs, I should be able to see all of the guilds right over here. Okay, perfect. So that's exactly what we want. All right, so I know this video was pretty long, but we needed to you know set up the actual data fetching. In the next episode, what we'll do is we'll actually uh, we'll actually render out the guild. So we'll style everything out. We'll render it out, and then it'll look pretty. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.